this one. You never taught me how to ride a bike. You never taught me how to be a kid. My, fr my friends don't even think you exist. They think I'm crazy. So when mom told me this may be last Last time I get to see you, um, they thought I was absolutely fucked in the head. I've been waiting 21 years, over 7,000 days, just sitting here waiting for you to be there for me. Were you embarrassed by me? Dad, you made me you made me hate the seasons. I hated the fall. When it used to force me to walk blocks away from school so 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 no one would ever see you. And I hate the winters when he never used to take me out to the city. And the springs, the springs. Well, you never saw me under those Friday night lights. And the summers, the summers. When all that nine-year-old boy wanted was, was to see the ocean. You, you in that, in that stupid trench coat. Stayed in your cold, dark apartment you called our home. You never taught me how to be a kid, Dad. You, uh, you, you never cared. Hi, my name is Julian Connor, sound emphasis and director of this film, Father. I'd like to take this moment to apologize to my friends, family, peers, colleagues, and teachers. Unfortunately, my cast canceled on me on Wednesday, December 2nd, just three days before my shoot. This is what was supposed to happen. Two little people, or humans affected with dwarfism, would emerge from the trench coat, revealing to my character that my whole life, my father has in fact been two little people in a trench coat. Dwarf number one would exclaim, We never told you because we wanted you to live a normal life. We didn't want the kids to make fun of you growing up. To which my character would reply, Oh my god, I wish. I wish I would have known. The second little person would then say, it was for your own good, as my character would proceed to break down in tears. I would then say, I love you, dad, as the little people would correct me, saying no, I love you dads, the plural version of dad. We would then embrace, and my two fathers would die in my arms. It was the perfect ending, or so I thought. Originally, Judy and Joseph Chang, two little people from Irvine, California, agreed to play the part of my father in the film, but canceled on me, just three days before the shoot. On Wednesday, December 2nd, I received an email from the two saying that they were having cold feet, felt as if the project was ridiculous and offensive, and would have to back out last minute. If my teachers have taught me anything about filmmaking, it's never to give up on a great idea. With my head high, I headed to Facebook's Chapman Film Connection to see if anyone in the group had any little people contacts. The response was incredible. I had many people both like and comment on my post with valuable information and tips. I knew this was my next step. I decided to contact one of the commenters, Jake Ellenbogen, who had the idea that I could use giant props to create the illusion that my talent was little. A brilliant plan. We decided to meet in the middle of campus later that day to go over his genius idea of making the props bigger. He came fully prepared with a binder full of blueprints, sketches, and materials needed to build the giant set. Unfortunately, after hours of discussing the possible project, he told me that the set would cost over $10,000 to build. Exactly. 
I mean, it's gotta look huge to make your town look small. Uh, giant sheets. Uh, what else did I have? Oh, uh, uh did I say a bigger, a mainly bigger pillow? That's just money. I do just have. We ended up going our separate ways, but I told him I would be on the lookout for anyone looking to build a giant set like he envisioned. I then decided to contact another commenter on my popular chat and phone connection post. Cole Sadler commented, saying, I can put shoes on my knees and kneel on them for you. My movement for the film will be severely hindered, but just thought I'd propose an artistic choice. Usually, I would be opposed to having a non-dwarf play a little person, but the days were winding down and I desperately needed at least one actor to play my dad. We decided to meet at the local directing stage to see how his idea would actually play on the camera. After an hour of test footage and a few rehearsals of the script, I found it would be too complicated a challenge to take on. Is that you don't cast as much of a shadow and then it doesn't violate seemingly you know, you try and keep your arms like right here so you don't show how right, you don't show your arms are. You know? Although his acting and line delivery were spot on, the fact that he wasn't actually a little person hindered the performance as a whole. I decided to pass on the idea, but told him I would definitely keep him in mind for a future non-dwarf role. After my failed attempts at fixing the film, I decided to bite the bullet and just tell you the story in its true form now. But I couldn't end without a little surprise for the audience. I decided to contact my good friend Bree, who had just become the owner of a new kitten. It was just the distraction I needed to make the audience forget that my IP fell into pieces. However, after picking it up, I misplaced it on the way back to my car. I lost, um, I lost a kitten. After talking with public safety, I was able to locate the cat and successfully bring it to the film set. If there's anything I've learned from the making of this film, it's that I should always have a backup, and I should lean towards more easily producible, non-offensive scripts. Thank you, and I look forward to sound designing someone's AP next year. God bless. All right. Always new women gotta keep a balance. The girl of your dreams to me is probably not a challenge. I've been counted out so many times I couldn't count it. Funny how now my accountant is having trouble trying to.